Hello everybody, this is Dr. Omid and in this video I'm going to finish the last bone of the uh, neurocranium which is ethmoid bone and uh, I'm going to continue with the bones of the splanchno cranium. Hopefully it will be useful for you. So, next bone that we are going to talk is ethmoid bone. Ethmoid bone is a, a pneumatic uh, bone is pneumatic bone because it contains of the air cells or paranasal sinuses so uh, that's why it is uh, considered and classified as a pneumatic um, uh, bone and uh, also according to the uh, shape it has an uh, irregular shape and uh, we have uh, uh, it's located uh, located at this region that we, we were talking, uh, it's the, uh, it's the ethmoidal notch of the frontal bone, is uh, this ethmoid bone is inserted to this notch, the ethmoid notch of the, uh, of the uh, uh, frontal bone between the uh, two orbital uh, part. Uh, so uh, ethmoidal bone, it has uh, three main part. The first main part is the cribriform plate. Cribriform plate is an uh, is a horizontal plate that is making a roof of the nasal cavity. It's called cribriform. Cribri uh, form. Uh, it's uh, uh, it means sito because of this uh, foramens, several foramens that is exist uh, uh, in. Uh, horizontal plate or cribriform plate. Then uh, another part uh, that you can see in the midline, it's uh, going caudally, directed caudally, this part. You can see here all this part. It's called perpendicular plate. According to its name, uh, from, the, uh, from the horizontal plate, it's going directed caudally and uh, it's called perpendicular plate of the, of the uh, you can see it better here, of the uh, ethmoidal bone uh, that we are going to discuss is making a part of the nasal septum. And the third part that you can see and is paired is this area that is called labyrinth of the ethmoidal bone. Labyrinth of the ethmoidal bone, you can see that we have also the other side, the labyrinth of the ethmoidal bone. Okay, so we are going to talk about the uh, uh, cribriform plate. As you see in the skull, I show, the uh, cribriform plate, it's making a roof of the nasal cavity. If I show it to you, here is the nasal cavity. And here is the nasal bone, and inside here in this area, it's the roof of the nasal cavity, is a part of the root of the nasal cavity, which is formed by the cribriform plate. And it's located between the two orbital part of the frontal bone, here and here and also uh, is located in front of the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone here this this cribriform plate and also it's a part of the anterior cranial fossa anterior cranial fossa so what we can find here at the cribriform plate you can see the sagittal Sagittal structure, which is here, is called Crista Galli. This Crista Galli, it means uh, if you see the rooster, it has top of the head, the crown. The crown of the rooster is called Crista Galli. This Crista Galli, it's the place for attachment of the uh, Falx cerebri that we were talking uh, about this. Uh, that is a duplication of the dura mater that is dividing the left and right hemisphere is the place of the attachment of the uh, crista galli once more here this is the cribriform plate and here is the crista 
Gali and uh, if you go forward from the Krista Gali you can see the internal uh, crest of the frontal bone and uh, between them uh, that this internal crest of the frontal bone and Krista Gali both of them is the place for attachment of the falx cerebri and between them it's the place uh, the foramen that already we discussed is the foramen secum that is a blind opening sometimes is open and uh, it passes emissary vein in front of the crystal gully. So this is the uh, crystal gully. And uh, another structure that uh, we, uh, you have to know is the, through these um, this foramens, several foramens, that uh, you have it at the cribriform plate, it passes the uh, cranial nerve number one, which is called olfactory nerves, and uh, respectively uh, the uh, fila olfactoria it's uh, passing through this uh, several opening at the cribriform plate and through one of the opening of this uh, cribriform plate it pass uh, an uh, artery which is called anterior meningeal artery as a matter of fact an, an, uh, anterior meningeal artery uh, it's passing through a canal that we are going to discuss, it's called uh, orbitocranial canal and this orbitocranial canal which is uh, starting uh, from the anterior ethmoidal foramen that in a while I will show you and is end up to the one of the foramen which is mostly in anterior side uh, it's the, it's the uh, end of the orbitocranial canal which is from this uh, foramen, the anterior meningeal artery uh, is passed, that is branch of the anterior ethmoidal uh, artery. So, uh, for recapitulation, what is passing through the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal bone, it passed uh, olfactory nerve or fila olfactoria, you can say, uh, and the anterior meningeal uh, artery. So uh, this is the re regarding the uh, regarding the olfactory the uh, cribriform plate. Concerning the uh, the uh, perpendicular plate, the perpendicular plate of the uh, ethmoidal bone, which is here and also is unpaired, it's uh, forming the anterior and superior part of the nasal septum. The nasal septum is a, 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 a sagittal septum which is dividing the nasal cavity to, uh, to uh, um, two parts, right and left, if you look at it here. I can show you that here is the perpendicular plate of the, uh, uh, of the ethmoidal bone, this bony structure. And here is somehow is broken, and but there is a gap between the perpendicular plate and another uh, bone that we are going to discuss is vomer. They are making the bony part of the nasal septum, and uh, this gap between them is uh, completed by the uh, septal cartilage that we are going to talk. So uh, they are forming the uh, nasal septum, which is separating the nasal cavity to the right and left. So. Uh, once more, the importance of this perpendicular plate uh, is that uh, the perpendicular plate is making the superior and anterior uh, part of the nasal septum here. Maybe I show you in other skull, it's better. Here you have the perpendicular plate of the ethmoidal bone this one, which is dividing the nasal cavity to the right and left. And um, this perpendicular plate is attaching posteriorly, posteriorly is attaching to the uh, sphenoidal crest, sphenoidal crest that uh, I will show you in a while, and anteriorly and inferiorly it's uh, joined uh, um, uh, with the nasal septum and inferiorly with the vomer that we are going to discuss. So if I show you the sphenoid bone, if you remember, here we had the 
the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, here is the greater wing of the sphenoid bone, here is the, the, the body of the sphenoid bone, and here is the posterior side, and here is the anterior side. If I uh, turn it a little bit, here, this, this part, this is called sphenoidal crest, and this bond, this is the red one, that is the sphenoidal crest, and this is the place that uh, the perpendicular plate of the ethmoidal bone is attaching to the sphenoidal bone posteriorly. So uh, this is uh, regarding the, the perpendicular plate of the uh, ethmoidal bone. So then uh, we have another part of the ethmoidal bone, which is uh, called a uh, labyrinthal part that you can see that is um, paired. This area is the labyrinthal part and here also is labyrinthal part. And if you look at it inside, you can see there are air spaces. These are those spaces that are called paranasal sinuses and respectively for this bone is called ethmoidal uh, sinuses. For this case, also we can use the terminology of the ethmoidal air cells or ethmoidal sinuses. Uh, these sinuses they are classified to three main group: the the anterior group, then it's the middle group, which is unconstant, and posterior group. So anterior, the middle, which, which is behind of this plate that I'm going to talk, and posterior air cells, ethmoidal air cells. This posterior ethmoidal air cells is toward the uh, concha of the sphenoidal sinuses that they are making the a sphenoidal sinus, the aperture of the sphenoidal sinus a little bit smaller, so it is related to this uh, uh, concha of the sphenoidal uh, sinuses, posterior ethmoidal air cells. At this uh, um, anterior and the deep to the middle uh, ethmoidal air cells, you can see a, a projection which is called bulla, is called ethmoidal bulla, which is contained mainly the deep to the uh, deep to the middle ethmoidal air cells, and uh, also it contains the large anterior ethmoidal air cells. Uh, and this bulla is continued to the part which is called infundibulum. And uh, this terminology and these parts, we are going to discuss the details. Uh, in the respiratory uh, tract, the bulla ethmoidale or ethmoidal bulla and infundibulum. Then a very important uh, part of the, uh, of the labyrinth is uh, this part or this plate, which is very thin, you can see, and uh, uh, this uh, thin bone uh, is called orbital plate, orbital plate or uh, papirazze, lamina papirazze, because it's very thin like a paper, and uh, that's why it's called papirazze. Any trauma to the orbit, it can uh, cause the uh, breaking of this and fracture of this bone. So that's why they call it pap uh, lamina papirazze or orbital plate, which is making a, a part of the medial wall of the orbit. So if I show you, Here that you see that already, already this part, it's somehow is broken because it's very thin, and it's uh, making the uh, making the medial wall of the uh, orbit this uh, this um, uh, orbital plate. So uh, this uh, orbital plate, if uh, you look at it, is very important. <clears throat> if the camera catch it. So we have the place that this orbital plate or lamina papirazze is fitting with the uh, frontal bone, the orbital part of the frontal bone, at the transitional 
or borderline plate, you can feed to see two foramen. One is here, and the other is here. One is here, and the other is here. Red and uh, white wire. Those are called the anterior and posterior etmoidal uh, foramens. Anterior and posterior etmoidal foramens. And the borderline between the orbital plate <coughs> and the frontal bone. Through the anterior etmoidal foramen, it passes the anterior etmoidal nerve and anterior etmoidal vessels. As we mentioned it already, that through this foramen, the anterior etmoidal artery, when it goes inside, it enters to the canal which is called orbitocranial canal. And through this canal, this orbitocranial canal, it's going inside the skull and it's open to the one of the opening in the, at the cribriform plate, which is through this opening, it exits the anterior meningeal artery, which is branch of the anterior etmoidal uh, artery. So <clears throat> this is the uh, anterior etmoidal uh, uh, foramen and <clears throat> is the beginning of the orbitocranial canal, which is through this orbitocranial canal, it passes the anterior etmoidal artery, which is giving the anterior meningeal artery, which is exiting through the cribriform plate. Otherwise, through the uh, anterior etmoidal foramen, it passes anterior etmoidal nerve and vessels. So here uh, is another skull. Uh, it's better seen. Again, this is the anterior etmoidal foramen. And here is the posterior etmoidal foramen that is well seen. We talked already about the anterior etmoidal foramen and here is the posterior etmoidal foramen. Again, you can see in the uh, borderline between the orbital plate, which is here again is broken. It's lamina papyrazes, paper uh, lamina of the etmoidal uh, bone. Uh, the labyrinthal part of the etmoidal bone and uh, the frontal bone. So in this part, you can always you, fi you find the anterior and posterior etmoidal uh, foramen. Uh, inside the posterior etmoidal foramen, it passes the same name, nerve and vessels. It means the posterior etmoidal nerve and vessels. Uh, they are entering to the canal, which is called orbito uh, etmoidal canal which is the end of this, a beginning of this canal is this foramen, posterior etmoidal uh, foramen, and end of this canal, it's uh, ending to the uh, posterior, uh, posterior etmoidal air cells or posterior etmoidal uh, sinuses. So here, since I have, you can see the topographical relationship of the labyrinth of the etmoidal bone. You can see the etmoidal the anterior etmoidal air cells, the middle etmoidal air cells, and the posterior etmoidal cells, air cells, all of them, they are the labyrinthal part of the uh, etmoidal bone. It has the uh, relation uh, which is uh, cranially, it's, uh, it has a relation with the frontal bone. Uh, it has the anterior leaf, which has related with the uh, lacrimal bone that is broken, we are going to discuss. Uh, the dorsocaudally, it's related to the lesser wing of the sphenoid bone, and uh, uh, posteriorly, it's related to the palatine bone, and uh, inferiorly, is related to the uh, maxa, maxilla. So this is the relationship of the uh, of the labyrinthal part of the uh, etmoidal bone. Then uh, another uh, part of the uh, labyrinthal part of the etmoidal bone that I'm going to show you. There are this structure that maybe from here, from posterior side, it's much more better to see. There are here, as you see, it's the it's the uh, labyrinthal part of the etmoidal uh, bone that it has the nasal surface, which is 
inside the nasal surface and uh, the, uh, they are making the lateral wall of the nasal cavity and here it was the orbital surface that they are making the, uh, the uh, medial wall of the orbit as a uh, lamina uh, uh, papyrus or orbital plate. At the nasal uh, surface of the labyrinthal, which is here, uh, they, are, and, uh, they are making the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. You can see two structures. One structure which is here, it's like a curved projection, bony projection, and the other one which is here is the curve and here you can see is a bony projection that is called superior and middle nasal concha. The superior and the middle nasal concha. Those are the part of the labyrinthal part of the uh, of the ethmoidal bone and uh, um, between them there are the uh, spaces that they are called nasal miatus. Generally we have um, three uh, nasal concha that uh, superior and middle nasal concha they are belong to the to the uh, ethmoidal bone and inferior nasal concha be careful is the separate bone a long bone that it's called inferior nasal uh, concha and uh, uh, between them for example between the middle nasal concha till the roof of the nasal cavity which is this cribriform plate there is a a space which is called the uh, superior nasal miatus between the below the in middle nasal concha till the inferior nasal concha that is not seen here. It's the middle nasal concha and below the inferior nasal concha is the inferior nasal miatus. Those are the structure that you are going to discuss uh, uh, at the respiratory system. Uh, what is important again uh, uh, is uh, that the middle nasal concha it has a very small uh, process which is called uncinate process and this uncinate process is the process that is, uh, is uh, fused with the ethmoidal process of the inferior nasal concha. So uh, uh, I'm going to show you the preparation uh, of the nasal concha uh, at the nasal cavity that they are making the nasal uh, the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Uh, here again the bony part you can see uh, well this is the inferior nasal concha this is the separate bone that we are going to discuss and uh, here is the middle nasal concha you can see here middle nasal concha and above that the smaller one that sometimes is broken it's the superior nasal concha once more the superior and middle nasal concha it's the uh, belong to the part of the ethmoidal bone and inferior nasal concha is a separate bone so this space that you can see my the wire is going is below the inferior nasal concha and the floor of the nasal cavity. This is called inferior nasal miatus. This is space between the uh, inferior nasal concha and middle nasal concha that the wire is going is the, uh, the middle nasal miatus. And uh, from the middle nasal miatus till the roof, this space is the superior nasal miatus. Uh, interesting here is the nasal septum again. The, uh, most of the people they have some deviation uh, of the nasal septum to the one side. So one of the nasal cavity will be bigger or, or they are not symmetrically. So uh, since it doesn't have problem or it doesn't make problem for the breathing, uh, so we consider it as a normal, but if the, uh, this nasal septum, the deviation, it will be so much that it's um, uh, making a problem for uh, breathing, so it needs some uh, correction and uh, sometimes it's operation it needs. So those are about the concha uh, that uh, we talked and I'm going to show you the real preparation at the nasal cavity and show you the concha when, our, uh, when they are covered by the, uh, by the mucous membrane. So here you have the preparation of the uh, nasal cavity. Uh, 
respectively is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Here is, the, is removed the uh, nasal septum and you are looking uh, to the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. For your orientation, here is the uh, frontal bone and here is the frontal uh, sinus, the paranasal sinus. And uh, uh, here is the cristagalli. So it means that here you have the uh, the cribriform plate of the ethmoidal uh, bone. It means that the roof of the nasal cavity. And uh, here, what I want here is the uh, here is the uh, hypophysial fossa. So it means that dorsally we are going to the sphenoid bone. Uh, so uh, here, uh, those are uh, those are the bones that they are making the roof of the nasal cavity. We are going to discuss uh, in the respiratory system. So uh, concerning the concha that I uh, promised you to show you the real preparation. So uh, here we have the, uh, the, the biggest and largest and longest uh, concha is the inferior nasal concha, uh, which, is, um, which, is, uh, in, uh, which is an independent bone, is a separate bone, which is called inferior nasal concha. Then we have the uh, middle nasal concha, the middle, middle nasal concha, which is here, and the superior nasal concha, which is the uh, smaller one. The middle nasal concha, uh, here, if you continue, you can see the uh, larger uh, projection or ball-shaped structure, which is called bulla etmoidale, uh, or etmoidal bulla, uh, which is deep to this, it's containing a very large anterior and sometimes the middle etmoidal air cells is located and uh, it's uh, continuing toward the infundibulum. Um, the, to the infundibulum is the place that this blue wire that you can see is the place that the frontal sinus is going and is uh, opening to the middle nasal meatus together with the uh, anterior and middle uh, nasal, uh, middle ethmoidal air cells, the three sinuses that we are going to discuss uh, in the respiratory system. Here it's the superior uh, nasal concha, which is uh, smaller, and uh, from the middle nasal concha to the roof here in this area there is a superior nasal meatus, and here is the opening, uh, as you see, is the opening that the posterior nasal uh, ethmoidal air cells and the sphenoidal air cells they are uh, opening in this uh, region. And uh, finally, here is the uh, inferior nasal concha, and here is the inferior nasal meatus, uh, which is this uh, wire that you can see is the place of the opening of the nasolacrimal duct that we are going to discuss, and is open to the inferior nasal uh, meatus. It means that to the inferior nasal meatus, it doesn't open the paranasal sinuses, but it's open the nasolacrimal duct. And this area that you can see, it's between the inferior and middle nasal uh, concha. This area, it's called the middle nasal meatus that we said that the uh, frontal and anterior and uh, uh, middle ethmoidal cell air cells plus this place that we are going to discuss it's called is a uh, is a semilunar uh, hiatus is the opening of the maxillary sinus which is uh, open to the middle nasal uh, meatus uh, usually at the region of the infundibulum uh, it's open the frontal and the uh, anterior and middle ethmoidal air cells in this area. Uh, here is another cross section, the frontal cross section uh, through the uh, skull. Uh, for your orientation, here is the, are the orbit, and uh, here they are the nasal cavity. Here you can see the largest paranasal sinuses that we are going to discuss is the maxillary sinus. It's approximately 25 milliliter uh, is the capacity of the maxillary sinus. Here is the part of the crista galli. It means that here in this region is the cribriform plate roof of the nasal cavity and all this part it's the nasal cavity. So here is the septum that uh, we mentioned the septum, the nasal septum. It has a bony part <coughs> that is formed by the perpendicular plate of the ethmoidal bone the anterior and superior part and the posterior, posterior and inferior part is made by the vomer. Uh, 
the rest is filled by the cartilage, the nasal cartilage, and some membranous, the connective tissue part, uh, plus uh, at, the, at the opening of the nasal cavity, we can have some cutaneous part of the nasal septum. So anyway, this one is the nasal septum, which is divide the nasal cavity to the uh, left side and uh, right side, and here, is showing the lateral wall of the nasal cavity here and from the lateral wall you can see this projection. This is the inferior nasal concha, you can see very nice, it's the biggest one. And here is the middle nasal concha which is here and the superior nasal concha which is not uh, seen at this uh, level of the cross section which is approximately here. But you can see uh, here the air cells, the ethmoidal air cells which are here. So, and uh, also here in this region there is a uh, inferior nasal meatus, which is the nasal lacrimal duct is open, and here is the uh, the middle nasal meatus, which is maxillary sinus, frontal sinus, anterior and middle ethmoidal air cells is open, and uh, finally in the superior nasal meatus, which is approximately at this uh, region. So the sphenoidal air cell, uh, sphenoidal a sinus and the posterior ethmoidal air cells is open uh, here. Since I have the uh, uh, inferior nasal concha here and uh, here, uh, I can immediately talk. Uh, till now it was uh, all about the ethmoidal bone and now since I have this inferior nasal concha, I uh, take this advantage and I explain. Uh, because we don't have this uh, separate bone <clears throat> except that one that I uh, showed, showed it to you here. If you can see. This is the inferior nasal concha, which is an independent bone, separate bone, which is called the inferior nasal concha. is uh, forming the part of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity as you see here and uh, it has uh, here back to the preparation here it has three processes of course uh, we cannot see but uh, you have to know that the inferior nasal concha it has three processes one is one process which is uh, going uh, uh, mm, uh, superiorly uh, is called the maxillary uh, process, uh, which is the curved process, which is going uh, cranially toward the uh, toward the uh, maxilla, and it's making or forming the medial wall of or nasal wall of the uh, maxilla, the upper jaw. Then we have the processus lacrimalis or lacrimal uh, process, which is uh, directed uh, toward the anteriorly and superiorly. And it's uh, it's um, uh, fusing with the uh, lacrimal bone, and uh, finally the uh, processus ethmoidalis, which is as we mentioned it, uh, this ethmoidal process. It's uh, connected with the uncinate process of the uh, middle nasal concha. Uh, this is uh, this is all about the, the inferior nasal concha that it's uh, important information once more. It's the, an independent bone and it has three processes, the maxillary processes, the maxillary process, lacrimal process, and ethmoidal process. Next bone uh, is vomer. We mentioned it also. This uh, vomer is a part of the bone of the splanchnocranium. Uh, the vomer is unpaired, uh, unpaired uh, bone and uh, it's a flat bone somehow. Uh, it has cranially the diverging part that they are symmetrically diverged and it's called ala vomeris or wing of the vomer, ala vomeris. Uh, the vomer generally, uh, this ala vomeris is cranial is, uh, f uh, is fit or is connected with the rostrum sphenoidale or sphenoidal rostrum. If you have a look at it here, please. So here you can see the, the vomer. This vomer is making a 
dorsocaudal part of the nasal septum. Dorsocaudal part of the nasal septum. So anterior and superior part of the nasal septum. Uh, once more, if you look at it, it's the perpendicular plate of the ethmoidal bone, which is here, and the dorsocaudal part of the nasal septum, which is here, is made by the vomer, and the gap between them is filled by the septal cartilage and then the connective tissue, the membranous part, and some small cutaneous part. So here is the ala vomeris, this diverging uh, plate, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, in the superior part of the ala, and is fusing with the rostrum sphenoidal or sphenoidal rostrum. It means that if I remove this one, uh, above that you can see the sphenoidal uh, rostrum. So uh, this is the part of the uh, vomer that it's important. Uh, the vomer is located cranially between these bones. Superiorly is uh, with the sphenoid bone. Inferiorly it's with the uh, maxilla. And uh, also the, uh, the um, uh, palatine bone. And uh, f finally anteriorly and cranially, anteriorly and cranially with the perpendicular plate of the ethmoidal bone. So this is the vomer. And this space, the gap space between them, is filled by the septal uh, cartilage. Uh, another important uh, information about the vomer, if I see from the lateral side, of the vomer, you can see obliquely the groove is the groove of the vomer or sulcus vomeris. It's uh, from the superior part obliquely going to the inferior part, and uh, uh, through this uh, groove, uh, is it passed nasopalatine nerve and uh, nasopalatine nerve. The other side also, if you see. Somehow you can see this groove that is called nasal, uh, is a sulcus vomeris or the groove of the uh, vomer uh, and uh, it's passing the nasopalatine nerve. Okay, next uh, small bones that they are part of the splanchnocranium uh, or uh, viscerocranium uh, is uh, nasal, they are nasal bones. As you see, they are paired bones. Uh, that uh, that here in the skull, if you look at it, it's uh, superiorly is uh, fusing with the uh, with the uh, nasal part of the uh, frontal uh, bone at this suture, which is called nasofrontal uh, suture, and uh, uh, from the side, the lateral side here and here, it's fusing with the frontal process of the maxilla. So uh, the nasal bone is located between the maxilla and the, uh, the frontal uh, bone. So uh, here is the nasal, uh, nasal frontal suture is connected with the nasal part of the frontal bone. And uh, here it's the place that it's connecting the nasal bone with the frontal process of the uh, maxilla. Uh, left, uh, right and left uh, nasal bone at the mid line, uh, they are fusing to each other uh, for uh, the, uh, through this uh, suture, which is called inter uh, nasal suture in the mid line. Um, to know this uh, anatomical structure of the nasal cavity, for example, or any part of the uh, skull, is important because uh, due to the trauma. Uh, and the fractures of the bones of the uh, skull or splanchnocranium or any part of the skull. So you have to recognize because if you know that between the nasal cavity there is a normal uh, suture which is called internasal suture or the connected with the frontal bone, it has a, um, a nasofrontal suture. So uh, it cannot be uh, misdiagnosed by the fracture because the fracture line also it can appear in some uh, sharp uh, fracture line 
but if you know that those are the anatomical uh, landmark and the um, structure, so uh, you don't do misunderstanding or misdiagnosis of the uh, normal anatomy with the uh, fracture. Uh, the last uh, uh, last uh, structure that I have to tell you about the nasal bone is uh, if you look at it from the from the internal part of the nasal uh, bone, uh, you can see a small groove here, which is called uh, sulcus um, uh, sulcus etmoidalis or etmoidal groove or etmoidal uh, sulcus, which is. Uh, here and through this uh, sulcus etmoidalis, it passes the external branch of the uh, anterior etmoidal nerve. External branch of the anterior etmoidal nerve. This nerve, uh, later in the peripheral nervous system, we are going to discuss that is innervating the sensitive innervation of the skin of the breach of the nose and apex of the nose or dorsum of the nose till the apex of the nose the external branch of the uh, the external uh, nasal branch of the uh, anterior etmoidal nerve external nasal branch of the uh, anterior etmoidal nerve because this anterior etmoidal nerve uh, also we are going to discuss in the peripheral nervous system it gives the internal nasal branch which is uh, supplying the innervation of the uh, mucous membrane mainly uh, at the anterior uh, part of the nasal cavity. Next bone of the splanchnocranium is a uh, lacrimal bone. As you see, it's a very small uh, bone. It's a four-sided uh, bone that it has a communication or it has relation with the uh, neighborhood bones that uh, I'm going to talk. The uh, lacrimal bone here is the superior border, here is the posterior border, here is the anterior border, and here we have the uh, crest, which is called posterior lacrimal uh, crest. And uh, here in this area you have a, a groove, uh, which is called lacrimal groove, and caudally is ended to a uh, fossa, which is called fossa saxi lacrimalis, or fossa for lacrimal sac, that it's uh, continued to the uh, to the na nasolacrimal uh, uh, canal, which is the nasolacrimal duct is uh, passing through. So, if you look at it, uh, the articulated skull here, here is the area of the lacrimal bone. Here is the area of the lacrimal bone. Uh, the lacrimal bone posteriorly is related to the orbital plate of the etmoidal bone or papirazze if, if you remember. Superiorly is related to the frontal bone. Anteriorly is related to the frontal process of the maxilla. Caudally is related to the orbital surface of the maxilla. So this is the relation of the lacrimal bone with the neighborhood bones. As I mentioned it now, the lacrimal bone here, it has a crest. This is called posterior lacrimal crest. Of course, we have or we must have anterior lacrimal crest. Be careful, anterior lacrimal crest, which is here, is not a part of the lacrimal bone, but, but as you see, is a part of the frontal process of the maxilla here. This is anterior lacrimal crest. So, between the anterior lacrimal crest, which is a part of the frontal process of the maxilla, and the posterior lacrimal crest, which is a part of the lacrimal bone, you can see there is a groove here. And this groove, as you see, is related down to this fossa, which is called fossa saxi lacrimalis, or fossa of the lacrimal uh, sac. And uh, from this uh, fossa, it's starting down toward the nasal cavity, a canal, which is called nasolacrimal 
canal and through this canal it passed the nasolacrimal duct that I mentioned it before that it's open to the inferior nasal meatus below the inferior nasal uh, concha. So uh, this uh, bone, this bone that I have it, it's the uh, left lacrimal bone in this case and uh, you can uh, see this uh, anterior uh, lacrimal crest here that it's matching with this area that is the anterior lacrimal crest here anterior lacrimal crest and this is a part of the groove which is the uh, lacrimal groove and it's ended down to the fossa saxi lacrimalis or fossa of the lacrimal sac the groove is bordered by this crest the posterior lacrimal crest which is a part of the lacrimal bone and anterior lacrimal crest which is a part of the frontal process of the maxilla next bone of the splanchocranium or viscerocranium is the zygomatic bone uh, it's very nice uh, bone this bone is very important because uh, because uh, this bone is connecting the bones of the uh, splanchnocranium or the visceral cranium to the uh, bones of the neurocranium. Uh, this uh, bone uh, it has three surfaces, it has three processes, and it has three foramens to uh, remember. So uh, the surfaces that you can see, uh, I can see you, uh, show you in the uh, at the articulated skull. Here is the lateral surface or external surface. This uh, surface, which is a little bit, it's uh, convex. It's making a, a, a prominence for the cheek. And uh, um, it's uh, important uh, bone for the beauty of the uh, person or people. And uh, also, uh, this, uh, at the, this uh, lateral surface, we have the foramen that we are, I am going to uh, uh, discuss. So this is the external or lateral surface. Then we have the orbital surface, which is this part, its orbital surface. It's making uh, uh, mainly the lateral wall of the orbit and partly the uh, floor of the orbit, this orbital part. And finally, the uh, posterior surface, which is here, and you can see it also here, it's the temporal surface. And uh, we call it temporal surface because this surface of the zygomatic bone is toward this fossa, which is called temporal fossa. So that's why this name of the surface is arising from uh, this uh, temporal fossa. So once more, uh, once more, the lateral surface or external surface, uh, or which is making a prominence of the cheek, then the uh, the. Uh, orbital surface which is making uh, mainly the lateral wall and part of the floor of the orbit and finally the posterior surface is the uh, temporal uh, surface regarding the uh, regarding the uh, the processes so cranially the zygomatic uh, bone it has a frontal process which is here which is articulated with the a zygomatic process of the frontal bone at this suture, uh, which is called uh, uh, frontozygomatic suture. This is one here in the skull, uh, here in the bone. Also, I can show you this is the frontal process, which is uh, more strongest, uh, is the strongest process among the other uh, two, uh, three, uh, the other two uh, uh, processes. So, cranially. Uh, cranially, it's uh, articulated with the frontal bone, respectively the zygomatic process of the frontal bone. Then we have the ventromedially. Ventromedially is this process, which is called maxillary process, which is articulated with the uh, with the uh, zygomatic process of the maxilla at the zygomatico maxillary uh, suture here. It's important, and finally, we already discussed, and here it is, again, the maxillary process, the maxillary process of the zygomatic bone, uh, and finally, posteriorly, it's the 
temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which is articulated with the zygomatic process of the temporal bone at this suture, which is called zygomaticotemporal suture, and they make the uh, zygomatic arch or uh, pons zygomaticus, uh, which is, um, is palpable uh, uh, under the skin uh, in this region also. So, uh, till now uh, we discussed about the uh, three uh, surfaces and three processes. Again, the three surfaces, the lateral surface, orbital surface, and the temporal surface, the three processes, the frontal processes, cranially, the ventromedial process, which is maxillary process, and dorsal process, which is temporal uh, process that is connected to the frontal bone and the maxilla and temporally respectively. So each surface we have, uh, we have uh, one foramen. Here you can see the, the uh, orbital surface here. Here is the orbital surface and at the orbital surface we have uh, zygomatico orbital foramen. Zygomatico orbital foramen. Through this foramen, in this uh, region, it passes the zygomatic nerve. Zygomatic nerve, after passing through the inferior orbital fissure, it uh, going to this foramen, zygomatic nerve, and then it's inside this foramen is dividing to two uh, branches that they are coming out from the other foramen of the zygomatic bone. One of the foramen, which is located at the uh, lateral surface is this foramen, which is called zygomaticofacial foramen. And uh, here you can see the zygomaticofacial foramen. So through this foramen, the same name nerve, it's zygomaticofacial nerve, which is a branches of the branch of the zygomatic nerve. It's coming out and it's responsible for the sensitive innervation of the skin uh, in this region, in the cheek region. And finally, at the posterior surface, if you look at it, so uh, it means that at the temporal surface, you can see another foramen, which is called zygomaticotemporal foramen. And uh, 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 through this foramen also it exits another branch of the zygomatic nerve, which is called the same name foramen, zygomaticotemporal nerve, that it's supplying the part of the, the sensitive innervation of the part of the temporal uh, region. So uh, as you see, it's, uh, uh, it's very uh, nice and cute bone that it's, uh, it's uh, connecting the visceral to the uh, to the uh, neurocranium, and uh, once more uh, we have three surfaces, three uh, foramens, and three processes. The lateral surface, the orbital surface, and the temporal surface. The frontal process, the zygomatic process, and the temporal process the zygomatico orbital foramen in the orbital surface, zygomatico facial foramen at the lateral surface, and zygomatico temporal foramen at the temporal surface. Here, another important information about this bone. Here it's the zygomatic bone, you can see. It's the lateral wall, it's making the lateral wall of the uh, orbit and small part of the, uh, of the uh, inferior wall or floor of the orbit. Posteriorly, it's connected with the greater wing of the uh, sphenoid bone, the orbital surface of the greater wing of the sphenoid bone cranially also with the uh, frontal bone. And here in the lateral surface or external surface, uh, we have a, a place for attachment of the, uh, of the tree muscle. This part that is making the inferior margin of the, uh, of the um, orbit is the place for the attachment of the uh, superior labial uh, muscle or musculus uh, 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 labialis superior. Uh, this is the 
uh, uh, place uh, 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 for the uh, for the muscle that is elevating the superior uh, lip. It means that musculus levator labi superioris. The place for the attachment is here, levator labi superioris, or the levator muscle of the uh, upper lip. Uh, then uh, at this external surface also we have uh, two at the place of the attachment of the two muscles, zygomaticus major and zygomaticus minor. So uh, once more the levator, this region at the part of the inferior orbital margin is the place for the levator labi superioris muscle and here is the place for the attachment of the zygomaticus major and zygomaticus uh, minor uh, uh, muscle. This uh, bone is uh, very important clinically. is one of the bone in maxillofacial surgery uh, which is uh, fractured, uh, the most uh, common due to the uh, assault or sport. If somebody is punching, uh, punching in this uh, in this region, so uh, this uh, uh, this bone it's uh, disconnected from the. Uh, frontal bone or uh, maxillary bone or uh, temporal bone and uh, you can see that this patient with this fracture uh, which is called zygomatico maxillary complex fracture uh, it has the uh, asymmetry of the face because of the detachment of this uh, connection and, uh, and the operation uh, of this uh, fracture is usually uh, uh, of course under the general anesthesia it's uh, somehow uh, simple uh, that uh, there is a hook that it's going uh, under the zygomatic bone uh, under the skin and it goes under the zygomatic bone and it's elevating it uh, upward and anteriorly and replace it uh, this bone to the to the this uh, place and you can hear that the reconnecting of uh, of this uh, place together with the special voice uh, during the operation that is uh, doing and then it uh, re remaining uh, or it's going back to the same normal anatomical part and then uh, you remove the uh, hook and um, and uh, you just do the disinfection and you wake up the patient from the general anesthesia. Mostly it's working in 90 um, or more than 90 percent but sometimes if the uh, fracture is so much uh, badly that uh, with the elevation uh, you don't uh, rep uh, repond or the, you don't uh, put it back to the same anatomical uh, position then you have to do some plates, the osteosynthesis plate uh, in this uh, place to, uh, to keep this bone in its original uh, place. The name of the operation is uh, called the elevation and the fracture is called uh, zygomatico maxillary complex. This is the clinical aspect of uh, this bone. So dear students, uh, that's uh, all about the first part of the bones of the cranium in the next video. Uh, I'm going to talk about the palatine bone, maxilla and the uh, mandible. Uh, in this case, we are going to finish the bones of the, uh, the splatnocranium or the viscerocranium. And then uh, we are continuing to uh, discuss about the skull as a whole. And uh, we are going uh, to revise all this structure uh, in the skull. Uh, uh, and uh, we will discuss about the foramens and the suture and all these things that we said it, uh, uh, in the skull as a whole. At the end, uh, again, I would like to thank uh, my colleague uh, Dr. Petrashek for his help and uh, I would like to thank you for your uh, attention. Uh, hopefully, uh, you will have a nice day and study hard. Thank you for your attention.